from Hollywood. You tell me you're a madman. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm going to take you into a conference room. Seems more seemly a setting for what I have to say to you. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Did you see the debate last night? <laughs> it's all over. John McCain, toast. He's done. I told you the guy had a temper. I told you it would come out. That cranky little bitch, it finally happened. He finally showed us true colors. He's done. I'd say stick a fork in him, but that's such a cliche. <laughs> John McCain finished. And this was not Obama's best debate. Obama's not a great debater. I'm going to tell you right now, Barack Obama is much better when he's just simply speaking. Uh, in the debate format, it doesn't work. But stop with this Joe the Plumber already. Please, stop. Stop. It's done. Now, I hope you'll go out and vote. Don't take the polls as gospel because the polls only uh, are accurate if people do what they say they're going to do. And that is when when we talk about likely voters, that that's what those numbers are. If you're a likely voter and then you hear that Obama's ahead by 10 points or 16 points or wherever it is, depending on the poll you believe... Be sure to go out there and uh, and vote, or the result could change. Then you could get Mr. Cranky and Miss Stupid as your uh, president and vice president. <laughs> but it's done. It's over. It's finished. McCain said nothing last night. Nothing that put Obama away. Now, all Obama has to do is keep his fly zipped. And don't make any mistakes, and it's done. He's won the election. That's it. And all of you uh, amateur economists out there who have your opinions about increasing taxes or the economy or the gold standard or whatever, well, you're just going to have to sit back and live with it, and John McCain's going to lose. And I go back uh, 21 years to when uh, John McCain tried to get me fired at KFYI Radio in Phoenix. John, I never forgot you. I've been lying here in the weeds waiting for you. And if Obama takes California by a mile and takes some of the other cities where our show is heard, I'll know I did my part to keep you from ever becoming president, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I am just thrilled. I didn't see anything in that debate that said to me that John McCain is going to be the president. Did you? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas, Likas Show. Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Show at one 800 800 tom You saw the final presidential debate last night. It's all over. Obama's going to win. McCain's going to lose. one 800 800 866 is our telephone number. Moses on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's going great. Um, first time, long time? Thank you. Uh, I watched the debate last night, and I agree with what you say about McCain and Obama, for the most part. And uh, I think McCain's uh, just worthless, and it's going to be another four years of Bush if he wins. But uh, I'm calling to talk about what he said about Sarah Palin and why she would make a great president. Yeah, go and, ahead. Uh, he, uh, the moderator asked, if something were to happen to you, God forbid, um why would she be a great president? And he said that she has experience with special needs kids. And I have no idea what that has to do with anything about running a country. Yes, well, on the one hand, uh, you're trying to attack Obama for not having experience. And on the other hand, you're saying she'd be a good president because she's raising a retard. And the kid's not even full-grown yet. She has... She, 
it's a normal baby. For we, now. Don't, we don't even know how he's going to turn out. Exactly. He could be a functioning child or functioning. We know adult about that little daughter. slutty daughter of hers. We know how that turned out. Yeah, she'll be screwing everybody in the White House. <laughs> She's going to have her little baby. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's I I have no idea why anyone would vote for McCain and her. Maybe but. because they want to have the first vice president who's a gilf. <laughs> you got a point there. <laughs> All right, Tom. It was nice talking to you. I'm sure it was. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Greg on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I just want to start off by saying my girlfriend forbids me from talking to you or listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, needless to say, uh, you know, I follow your one-on-one advice. Anyhow, uh, the debate was pretty good last night, don't you think? Well, I actually, I, I certainly don't think it was the best performance of either one of them, really, to be honest with you. What was good about it, if you're a fan of Obama, is that McCain did not deliver what they call that knockout punch. He didn't, like, come up with, uh, you know, the October surprise. He did not come up with anything that would knock Obama off his feet. I mean, really, it's like a boxing match you've been watching. You've seen the first uh, 11 rounds. And in the 12th round, you know, one guy's winning. And the other guy uh, is not going to win on points alone. So he has to knock out the other guy to win. Well, I, and, I, and, I, and McCain didn't knock out Obama. I think Obama used extreme restraint in not bringing up the fact that Sarah Palin was uh, tried by a bipartisan committee in Alaska and found to violate the ethics code of government. That, that, that's how far ahead uh, Obama is, that he didn't even have to use that. And, and I might add that, uh, you know, when you bring that up, you start getting one of those extended debates about whether it was partisan, uh, no matter how bipartisan they say it was, they're going to say it was partisan and she's a victim. And, you know, instead of turning into a victim, uh, Obama turned her into a non-entity. Um, let me ask you something. Do you think that McCain has a, a grudge against Vietnam still, and you think he's getting an itchy finger just to launch the birds if he gets Well, I, in my opinion, and let's face it, the guy was a POW, and I think as a result he tends to be uh, somewhat cranky, a side he doesn't want you to see. Yeah. But it showed up in the debate last night for about ten minutes. The guy was uh, really on edge. A cracked wall, that's what you know what. I mean, uh, no was, doubt. And, uh -huh. and that's the thing about this guy. That's the thing that people who know him have known about him since the days when I was in Arizona doing talk radio. That, we, that he has, no, but he has a temper that is beyond belief. And right. he can be completely irrational and, in, and frankly insane. And uh, you don't want somebody like that as president. I don't care what party he belongs to or what his politics are. Exactly. You know, it's, it's nice to see that, uh, you know, cool minds will prevail in this. Hopefully. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying hopefully. It looks like he's, as you say, sticking with a fork. Yeah, yeah. It's all over. I think last night's debate put it away for good. I really appreciate your show. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Paul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, first time caller. How are you? Doing great. Hey, you know, I just started listening to you probably a few months ago. I live out in Vegas. But anyway... uh Amazing stuff. I, uh, I I love what you do, and uh, you know what's funny is I just heard you a minute ago, and I I said to myself, "Damn, is I uh, darn? I I never I never knew what your political viewpoints were, but if I would have just guessed out of the blue, because I know you're a wealthy guy, I would have said, uh, you go with those wealthy people in the for the tax breaks.' And 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 not to mention, you you said that 20 years ago you had a problem with McCain. I can relate to that. Notwithstanding that, if you didn't have a problem with him, or or, or more better asked, uh, what makes you not go like a lot of the the wealthy guys go with the the Republican? Well, the the primary reason in this particular case is I don't want any more of the George W. Bush era. Got it. That's it. If you vote for McCain, you're voting for the third term of George Bush. Let me ask you this, then, because you know I'm I'm an average guy. I'm not wealthy. Maybe I will be one day. I'm always striving, but. What do you say to to the the that little group or well what do you say to the group that, that goes with the Republicans but they're not wealthy 
but they don't realize that, that everything they're going to, you know, vote for, even though they're not going to win, is not going to help them a bit. What do you say to them? Well, uh, the, this has been an issue ever since the days of Ronald Reagan. They call those people Reagan Democrats, the people who are foolish enough to believe that although they'll never amount to anything, and they've never amounted to anything, and they're just waking people, like Joe the Plumber, um, that uh, somehow they're going to hit the uh, uh, the magic jackpot or win the imaginary lottery, and they're going to be rich people, and they're going to want their taxes kept low. And, and you'd think maybe they'd get down to reality, which is where they're at right now, and if they're not rich right now and they're in the middle class or average... Oh, I have a message for Joe the plumber. Hey, Joe, you're never going to be any more than a plumber. And, and even if you are, you're not now, so go with the guy who's going to actually give you a break, not the well, guy who's going to go, I'm going to cook taxes, yeah, for 5% of the wealthy people. Right. Well, that, that's exactly right. But, Paul, you have to understand that although I'm a wealthy person, I grew up dirt poor. Yes. Part of the reason I am here is because of a government training program that was wiped out by, if you remember Dan Quayle, it was called the CETA program. Wow. And I was in a training program, a federal government training program called CETA back in 1980 mm -hmm. when I was 24 years old and unemployed. Mm -hmm. And um, I took elocution lessons at government expense and uh, learned uh, television journalism at government expense. And while I am not a TV journalist, I have more than paid for my CETA training with years and years of paying six-figure-plus amounts into the federal coffers as a result of my high salary. So um, I know that I had a leg up to get where I am. I also know that if the average person can't afford to buy anything... It doesn't matter how rich I am, uh, being rich requires me to sell stuff. I in this case, when I read a commercial and ask you to buy something, I need you, the listener, to have the money to pay for it. Got it. So I I'm sorry, I can't agree with the idea that the only people who should get tax breaks are rich people. You're smart. You're, you're a smart man, Tom. Like I said, I just started hearing you a few months ago. I'm 44. I've waited till I was 39. I had no kids, never married, nothing. Uh, I guess I got lucky there without having the right advice. But uh, I got a wife, five years. She's a good lady. We got a couple kids. You know, I'm happy. But but I have so much respect for, for the advice you give and certainly wish I would have heard you 20 years ago. I might have had a little more fun with the ladies. But right. uh, I have a tremendous respect for what you do uh, in, in the relationship and, and, and just living. But I have even more respect hearing that that you you see the realities that, that you do see not only in in life but in politics and and uh, ready to see this old man go home and sit in his chair and watch tv and there's no doubt last night's debate confirmed it uh john mccain is toast he's not going to be the president doesn't that feel good 1-800-5800-TOM that's our telephone number let's say hello to will on the tom like show hello hey tom how you doing doing okay I was just calling because what what I was bothered by uh my wife has worked with uh development de sorry developmentally disabled adults and kids pretty much as long as we've been together. I'm cool with you calling a retard and my wife is not, but how the McCain just whores out the little uh, retard baby any chance he gets. Anytime he gets stuck on something, you know she has a special needs child. Yeah. yeah. Don't 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 pick on her. Oh yeah. You know, and we're watching the debate and uh I feel terrible for saying this, but I tell my wife, because anytime there's a, a point that uh, McCain can't answer, all it is is talk smack about Obama. You know, he, he doesn't oh, have yeah. a valid point. Oh, you're the devil, you know. Yeah, well, your friend is William Ayers, yeah, the terrorist. A terrorist and, <laughs> Stop you know, it. You should, you're a bad person. and you're. How, you stupid does he, how stupid does he think we are? Yeah, and what I told my wife is I said, if this guy somehow wins... Never have I wished ill will on someone, but I pray that the inaugural ball is such that he can't handle it and he has a stroke. Not dies, but can't be president so that we're stuck with this latest president. So we got at least four years of people realizing, boy, having a little retard baby and playing hockey doesn't make you qualified to be the president. <laughs> if people think that, oh, she's so great, and I see I live in Reno now, I'm from Southern California, and I live in Reno now, and we have all these mullet-wearing... Republican people, they have no money, but they think the Republicans are going to help them. And they have all these bumps that say, uh, Sarah Palin is more qualified than Barack Obama. I'm sorry, I'm a pretty smart guy for an average guy. I'm probably Joe Sixpack. I don't want me to be president. I'm not that smart. I manage an apartment complex. I'm totally qualified to do that. Well, that's the point I've been making to people. When I decide who I want for president, here's the litmus test. 
the person I vote for has to be smarter than me. Exactly. And I'm smarter than most of my friends. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm smart enough to be president. If you're somebody I want to go bear hunting with or somebody I want to have a beer with, uh, that's all wonderful, but you're not good enough to be president. Exactly. And that, that all Palin's got going for is if I had a six-pack at the bar, I'd take her cougar butt home. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Sean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Great. Hey, I'm 20. Just started listening to your show. I love it. Love everything you got to say. Thank rarely you. Do, rarely do I ever disagree with you. Cool. And this is one of the things that I'm going to agree with you on, is that McCain is just, he's not cut out for the job. And I mean, you were talking about baggage yesterday yeah. and how you have a zero tolerance for baggage. And he's a POW. And why would we want a president who's got that kind of baggage to deal with? I mean, it sounds like this guy's probably got some issues he needs to talk about. Well, if you saw the anger in his eyes, there was about a nine or ten minute period in the debate where he just was angry at Obama. I mean, it was all he could do to keep from jumping over the desk and strangling him. Well, even at the end, the closing statements, I mean, he was sweating when Obama was talking and he was, you know, scratching the side of his head just going, gosh, you know. This guy, this guy's way smarter than me, and he is just—he's just in the wrong race because he, even at the end, the wife didn't even talk. I mean, they just hate each other's guts, and I would hate someone. You know, if I played sports, I'd hate. I always hated the guys who were better than me too. So, I mean, this guy's just—he's got way too many issues to be our president. And I think Obama, you know, not only is a good-looking man, good figurehead for for the United States, but. I mean, you know, he's well put together. He's educated. Who cares if he doesn't have a lot of experience in, you know, foreign politics? He'll learn. I mean, yeah. he's a smart guy. Yeah. I just imagine Oprah there with the power tools and I thinking about Obama. You ever think about that? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. She, you know, she's there. She's got the, uh, uh, she's got the pocket rocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. oh, don't even get me started on Palin. Give me some change, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I just, plain, plain and simple, I just think Obama's, he's ready for the, being a president. He's, you know, ready to learn, ready to learn the ways of the United States. And She, may be, in the, she may be in the sack with Stebbin, but we all know who she's thinking about. <laughs> God, uh, I just love your show. I mean, I'm just glad that I, I I'm just glad I found your show at such a young age so I can learn your ways. Thank you for that, Sean. Thanks, thanks so much. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. McCain is toast. Last night's debate proved it. It's all over. James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how you doing? I'm a, I'm a registered Republican and a member of the NRA, but um, you know, I, don't, I don't see McCain doing anything good for us. What do you think uh, Obama's going to do with uh, gun law? I, I don't know because, remember, no president is a dictator. Not even George W. Bush, who would love to be. And uh, no matter what the president wants to do, he has to get Congress to uh, be complicit with him. So it doesn't really matter what Barack Obama wants to do. What matters is what Washington, D.C. wants to do. Now, understand where I'm at, James. I'm a libertarian with a small L, and uh, I am in favor of the rights of individuals to own guns. I am not an anti-gun nut. And uh, so uh, I certainly... Uh, I certainly don't want to see gun rights curtailed in any unreasonable way. I don't think your average city dweller ought to be owning an Uzi. No. So assault weapon bans are okay with me. but uh, uh, And by the way, even if they weren't okay with me, they're going to happen anyway, because I don't think there's very many people in favor of folks owning assault weapons. But as far as guns, I'm about to buy a gun myself, and I'm about to get the proper training. Because I bought a home out in a rural area, and it's a necessity. you got to have one. Yes. So uh, understand where I'm at. Even though I'm voting for Barack Obama, I'm in favor of the rights of Americans to own guns. Okay. Well, I agree with that. And uh, just I was just curious because I know Democrats in the past have wanted to you know, take away handguns. Well, they away... wanted to, but we had a Democrat in office from uh, 1993 to 2001, and it didn't happen, did it? No, it didn't. Right. Hi, All right. James. All right, well, blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. 
but the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had, ever. Check them with a stopwatch, please. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. You saw the debate last night. John McCain is toast. Let's say hello here to uh, Simon on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Uh, I, this is my first time voting in the U.S. I'm Canadian, and I uh, moved here seven years ago. I got my citizenship, and it's my first time voting. And I, like you, make over seven figures, and uh, I'm just curious... I'm just curious how comfortable, why you're so comfortable with the fact that Obama's talking about basically raping me and you. Well, first of all, um, I have learned through the years of Republican policy, and I'm not a, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican, by the way. I'm an independent. Neither am I. I, I have no, no allegiance. But you see, uh, I have learned that using the phrase tax relief or the word taxes uh, is a great way to sneakily steal money out of people's pockets by saying you're not going to raise taxes. That sounds wonderful. But over the last eight years, you have been fleeced because in order to keep the economy going, the largely Republican leadership in this country for six of the last eight years uh, has devalued the dollar dramatically. That is another form of taxation. You have right. to see the big picture. Right. I mean, we have a Republican president now, and we've had Republicans uh, running the House and Senate largely for, for six of the last eight years. And for the last two years, the Democrats have had a microscopic majority uh, that is not enough to uh, prevent filibustering and what have you. Uh, and so uh, what do we have? Stock markets in the tank. The dollar's in the tank. Commodities are falling off a cliff uh, the people's uh, savings accounts, uh, the interest rate reduced down to a microscopic number. So, so you feel that if that if uh, new new blood gets in and turns things around, then then the value that you're going to gain from that better economy is worth the the extra tax bite. That yes, you're I was doing much better under Bill Clinton with what they call higher taxes. Right. But keep in mind, with a budget surplus, our dollar was worth more. Yeah. Being new, being new to all this, I'm watching the debates, and I'm, uh, you know, it's so obvious to me the smarter man is is Barack Obama, but I, but my pocket book is, book is saying, ah, yeah, but don't be fooled because there's other ways okay. to tax you that are not called taxes. Right. Okay. It's just a big hit. You know, I, I was looking at the chart. And Washington Post put up a McCain versus Obama chart the other day, and you know. Uh, over six hundred thousand a year, it's like another hundred and twenty grand. At three million a year, it's seven hundred grand. I mean, that's that's a yeah. But uh, how yeah, seven hundred thousand devalued dollars? I mean, and and by the way, that's assuming that Obama got his tax plan in exactly as he proposes it, and and uh, does not uh, have any alteration. And with five hundred and thirty-five members of Congress, that's not exactly likely. Okay, so typically, typically all these promises don't necessarily uh, come to fruition. But they, they can't. Remember, Bill Clinton wanted to have national health and insu national health insurance. No, I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Okay, back uh, back when he was elected in ninety two, that's one of the things he and uh, his wife Hillary wanted uh, to impose upon us was a national health plan, just like Barack Obama does. Right. Okay. But it didn't happen. So and and here's the thing: if, uh, if your dollar is worth eighty seven cents. <laughs> You've been taxed 13%, whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, I uh, I appreciate the info because, uh, you know, just just on the surface, it was it was scaring me. You know, my it's it's obvious who's, who 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 should be president, but I didn't know if my pocketbook could handle it. Feel better about it, son. <laughs> I will, and uh, and I hope the Kings uh, can play a little more uh, inspired hockey this year. Just, hey, you know, did I, you see the game against the Ducks the other night? I did. I, w I was worried that there was sort of going to be a good AHL team, you know. <laughs> well, uh, they made the Ducks look pretty bad for one night. Uh, that's that good. Was... Well, they're young and they're fast. That's that's one thing they got going for them. Yeah, and they've got a pretty good coach who's been to the Stanley Cup Finals. So. Yeah, well, we'll see. He might be broke in a few years. <laughs> we all might be broke in a few years. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Simon. Appreciate the call. Here we are at one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, uh, John McCain. You saw the debate last night. He's toast. Here's Neil on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. What's going on? Not much, son. Hey, uh, you know, I watched the debate last night. Let's listen to it on Rio, 970 AM, Portland, Oregon. 
Um, you know, listening to the running commentary, I watched it. I felt that John McCain was like a deer in the headlights. You know, just waiting for what's going to happen. And Barack, he was sitting there just smiling, had an answer for everything. Both of them, though, did not convey any kind of real presence for me. Um, well, as, cl clearly, and, if you've been watching these debates, and not just these debates, but the debates during primary season, uh, yeah. Barack Obama's weakness is debating. And he's never shrunk from a debate. He's always agreed to debate. Uh, but he is not a great debater. Well, Which many Democrats are not. The the thing about Barack Obama, he's very well spoken, which can fool most people. I'm not for either one. I lean more toward Barack because of McCain's choice for a vice president. I you know, you know anybody who looks like Tina Fey, I'm kind of having a problem with. You know, <laughs> it, she she really has nothing going on for. Her. Uh, if you can see Russia from Alaska, that's fine, but that doesn't denote any kind of uh, relations with them. It just it worries me being in Portland. My dad has his own companies. He just opened up another one, and he's worried. I'm worried. I don't know what to do, but at the same time, Barack poses something. It, whoever's in there is going to take time to rebuild everything. It's not going to be within the first six months. And by the way, let me, I said something this week on the program, and I want to say it again to you. I don't think it matters what plans either one of these men have, uh, whether it's uh, Barack Obama or John McCain, uh, because uh, this is a problem that is going to have to work itself through the system. And that is all the toxic mortgages, all the bad debt, all the companies going out of business. Uh, it's like eating a bad oyster. You can take all the Pepto-Bismol you want, but until you crap that out of your system, uh, you're going to have food poison. And that's yeah. what we have now. Well, it, you know, throwing money at it is not going to fix it. Uh, when President Bush came online and said, oh, by the way, we're going to inject $700 billion in the economy. But he said, you know, this has been coming on for 10 years when he was asked, well, why didn't we pick this up quicker? He said 10 years. But he's been in the office eight years, so he didn't realize this. I mean, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, which is more than he deserves. Four years ago, you didn't realize this? Well, you know, you're the fact is, else. this problem started after 9-11, which is uh, now over seven years ago. Yes. That's when it started. I mean, we had other issues, but the toxic mortgage problem began when the Federal Reserve, and by the way, the short-term interest rate does not determine mortgage rates. Don't bother calling in about that. But when the interest rates were being cut dramatically to keep the economy going after 9-11, those were the seeds of the problem we have today. Well, and I'll tell you right here in Portland, they were talking about all these financial firms that gave uh, loans to illegal aliens. They didn't have the right credentials, but they didn't notice that until after they did that. I mean, you give a loan out. And then all of a sudden, well, we have all these wrong loans that we gave out because the federal government's going to bail us out. So now all of a sudden we have bad loans that you're never going to collect on because you don't know them. I mean, I worked in day labor. I sent guys out every day. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute, gave bad loans out. Federal government's bailing us out. It's all good. Sorry. We made a mistake. Oh, we made a lot of mistakes, and it's not all good, believe me. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? Great. Good. I wanted to uh I wanted to let you know where McCain really lost me in this whole thing is uh when they had to make their vice presidential selections, Barack Obama, he if he would have chose Hillary Clinton, he most likely would have had a slam dunk win. Would you agree? I don't know if it would have been a slam dunk win because I think the uh, conservative uh talk show hosts on AM radio who love to uh to think they are somehow another wing of the federal government. Uh, one of the, you know, you have the judicial branch, you got the executive branch, you got the legislative branch, and then you got the windbag branch, uh, they're one of the main branches of government. Uh, they would have uh, had a field day if Hillary Clinton were uh, nominated. Uh, they had enough of a field day with Joe Biden, but I think with Hillary Clinton, they, they would have had more to chew on. True. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I think uh, I think Obama had you know he would have got a big portion of the of the female vote. But what I appreciate what I appreciate about what he did is that 
he basically saved us from the nightmare of Hillary Clinton. Even though he probably had a good chance of winning with her, he put, to take McCain's tagline, country first, and said, if God forbid something happens to me, I have more faith in Joe Biden to pick up the ball and keep running. Well, more now, importantly, uh, uh, you know, I, I think Barack Obama not picking Hillary Clinton could have been a much bigger mistake. But it was fixed for him by John McCain and his very cynical choice of Sarah Palin, uh, thinking that the women who uh, favored Hillary Clinton favored her because she was a woman. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. And, and, uh, and, and there was a poll the other day, and there have been stories in all the national publications, uh, Wall Street Journal on down, uh, that have pointed out that uh, this, this gamble has backfired, that uh, women who supported Hillary Clinton are insulted by the choice of Sarah Palin. Yes. Yep, you're absolutely right, and and that's where McCain lost me because he, I don't think he could look Americans in the eye and in good faith say this is the person who I think is best fit to run the country if something happens to me, and I, that's where he lost me. I did not appreciate what he did for the vice presidential selection. Mike, I couldn't agree with you more. Thanks so much for the call. You saw the debate last night. John McCain is toast. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A Tom Likas show. It's the Tom Likas show coming to you from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Following up to the debate between Barack Obama and John McCain last night, the final presidential debate, which came to you from the campus of Hofstra University in Hempstead, Long Island. <laughs> it's all over. All people have to do is show up and vote for who they said they're going to vote for, and it's a done deal. Barack Obama will be the president, and John McCain is toast. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's David on the Tom Likas show. Hello, David. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing okay. Excellent. Listened to you for a long time, and uh, you're like the father I never had. So I really appreciate you uh, doing your show. Thank you. I work as a financial advisor, and I I've been a McCain supporter for a long time. I lived in Arizona for a long time, and I don't think you can count him out so quick. This is a guy when he's behind, he tends to come back pretty quick. I think he was lackluster in the debate last night. Well, I think both of them weren't that great. So uh, I agree with you that both of them weren't great, but he needed to be better than Barack Obama. He needed to deliver a knockout punch. He's the guy who's been losing on people's scorecards for 11 rounds in a fight. And in the 12th round, the only way to win is to knock the other guy out. Yeah, yeah, yes and no. But I, I think as people come to see the policies of John McCain a little bit better, I, I think he's had a hard time articulating what he needs to articulate. Well, that, well, that's if. Uh, by the way, if you can't articulate what you need to articulate, uh, that's part of the job of being president. I, I agree with that. I work as a financial advisor, and my clients are liquidating left and right. And I'll tell you, the, one of the main reasons that comes through on the phone when I'm talking to them is because they want to liquidate at a 15 percent capital gains uh, under the current administration versus a 25 uh, percent capital gains under Barack Obama. And I think that's part. A small part of the reason why we see the market uh, keep diving. People are coming out into cash, and they want to get rid of uh, at the lower capital gains rate. Um, I'm sure that's uh, I'm sure that's in there somewhere. I will give you an example. Uh, uh, the company I work for uh, offered me a deferred compensation plan, what we commonly called an excess 401k contribution. Yeah, and in it, I could have more money taken out of my pay. Uh, which would not be taxed today, but would be taxed when I get it after leaving the company. And it's my belief that tax is going to be higher when I leave the company. So I want the money now. <laughs> I said no to the deferred compensation. So there, there could be people doing that. But I don't think that's the reason for what we're seeing today. It, the, the, the drops in the market are too large. They're too large. It's and by the way, there are people selling now who don't have capital gains. They have capital losses. <laughs> well, that's, that's true. Um, I mean, if you've lost money, you're not going to uh, be penalized by higher capital gains tax. My, my worry is, you know, I, I'm a total capitalist. I, I'm so a am I. I lean, I lean libertarian as well. 
and I, I fought this for a long time. And Well, if you're a libertarian, then you know that uh, over the last eight years you've been told uh, about smaller government and getting the government off people's backs, and it's been a total lie. You've also been told about cutting the size of government. The government's never been bigger and never had larger budget deficits, ever. Agree. And yeah, we've, had, we've had much bigger wars than the Iraq War. That's one of the reasons you see a lot of Republicans going toward the libertarian route, because... Why, yeah, I, no, I, you don't. No, no. Correction. You don't see a lot of Republicans going the libertarian route because you don't see a lot of anybody going the libertarian route. At least my friends. <laughs> well, I, again, so if, if all 12 of your friends vote for Bob Barr, it's not going to make any difference. Oh, I'm telling you, this election is going to be closer than I think a lot of people realize. I actually think McCain can pull this off. No, really McCain don't. is not going to pull it off primarily, by the way. It, 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 we're talking about America electing a black man for the first time. Uh, if a white man were running for the Democrats, he'd be a 25-point lead right now, strictly on the strength of the unpopularity of the Iraq War and the economy. Well, I, I have a couple of theories why I think McCain could win this. Uh, we see a lot of polls, you know, they're, they're all over the place. Some show seven points behind, some are up to like 14, 15. But I think that it's not as much racism. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to play a certain factor. But as much as people, when they do these surveys, they answer the phone, they think they, that the people on the line want them to say Barack Obama because it's a PC thing to say. I, we've talked about this, and I do think there's a certain factor there, uh, but not enough to lose Barack Obama the election at this point. If it were two or three points, if we were talking about within the margin of error, no doubt about it. But that's not what it is. It's a double-digit lead now for Obama. Well, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm interested, too, to see if a lot of Obama people don't come and vote on Election Day because they're so comfortable with this. Republicans come out in droves. Well, we're going to find out. And by the way, the other thing you have to remember, although you're not one of them, there are people who have voted Republican in the past, the so-called Reagan Democrats, who are going to vote for Obama. States like Michigan and even Indiana, which hasn't voted uh, Democratic in, in decades. Yeah, it's going it's to be interesting to see what happens. Can I make one more point, Tom? Yep. If you don't mind? Uh, yeah, just looking, looking at taxes, and, and that's one of my biggest pet peeves when I look at taxes. Uh, and I haven't been happy with George Bush uh, over the last eight years. And trust me, I was a huge supporter. Uh, I, I won't say what capacity, but I've been a big supporter a lot of ways. How, how'd that work out, by the way, that George Bush thing? Well, you got to give him credit because... For what? Uh, Walking principle, upright? Principle that he, he never really tried to make anyone happy, necessarily. He went off on his own principles, and, and it's a good sign of a leader. What Only principles were these? Uh, for example, here's a guy who said that he did not believe in government interference, who just uh, encouraged Congress to give $700 billion to banks... Uh, how is uh, how is that following his principles? That's uh, I, I can't disagree with you. That's a bad principle, right? right. <laughs> but, but looking at the biggest thing that I'm I'm concerned about is looking at personal tax rate going from thirty six to thirty nine. Looking at capital gains going from fifteen to twenty five. The uh, what difference does that make if uh, right now you have lower taxes, but the dollar is, has has crapped the bed? Well. And the dollar was intentionally devalued to help American corporations sell stuff overseas. You really think so? Oh, yes. I, I, I don't look at tax rates. I, I have learned from over the years. For example, like it or not, I don't know how old you were. I see on the screen that you're 31, which means that you were 14 when Bill Clinton was elected. So let me tell you this. I look at the bottom line. After taxes, after capital gains, after, after, after. I did better when Bill Clinton was the president than I'm doing now. And so did a lot of other people. But and when you have thing. a, when you have a budget a surplus, the dollar is stronger than when you don't. That's a good thing that Bill Clinton did was Bill Clinton actually went from the left, moved more towards the center, and actually brought policies that were more Republican policies. Well, but uh, but uh, yeah, these are not Republican policies because, as we've seen the last eight years, the Republicans are certainly capable of spending like drunken sailors, and that's what they've done. Bridge to nowhere. And, and that's and that's why Ted we're Stevens. Right now. Yeah, but the, the, again, this is you know the, this has all been a lot of rhetoric that people like you, unfortunately, have bought into. Well, had, had McCain actually not let the seven hundred dollar billion dollar bailout, had he gone against it, you I, know. Even, even, that that is true courage 
to tell people that there's going to be a lot of pain coming up here. We've been very bad, and now we have to pay for it. That would be courage. Giving in and printing up another $700 billion and handing it over to the same banks that put us in the position we're in, that's a coward. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the move. I, I still think Brock's our answer. Uh, our answer is to stop the Bush thing. <laughs> the Bush thing has to come to an end. Has to. This hope, uh, not, just not this way. I, I'm, I'm looking. At, this you know, is the only way we have right now. But, but look at taxes on small business owners. I, again, we cannot have Sarah Palin as the vice president. We'll be the laughing stock of the world. And contrary to what many of you uh, neocons believe, uh, you can't be a laughing stock in the rest of the world and continue to function because you need the rest of the world, including when you need the rest of the world to help you fight in places like Iraq. You need the rest of the world. You can't be a laughing stock. He should have robbed me. That's, that's what we're all saying. Well, he didn't. And that that gives you an idea of John McCain's judgment right there. Should have killed He didn't. <laughs> He's not that smart. <laughs> Picking Sarah Palin, hallelujah! It sealed his fate. Yeah, it bothered bought me. She, she couldn't name any newspapers, and I was thinking, just, just say Wall Street Journal, New York Times, something. Take some she doesn't even know the names of those. She's a moron, and he picked her. But she's a hockey mom. That's wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll see her down at the rink. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me. Can you uh, take me out, Kobe style? Of course I can, David. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. All right, uh, you know the deal here, folks. Well, by the way, take out the stopwatch. I really encourage you to do it. We now have the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had, ever. So uh, when you're listening to the show, we get back to the show so fast your head will spin. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.